hello and welcome back to another video today I'm working with the Kuretake Japanese watercolor set this is the 48 piece and I am choosing the colors pink red and some yellow I wanted to keep this bright and airy Although, as I am putting down my colors, as usual, I don't really have a plan. I just like how these colors mix and mingle together. And I am hoping that once I've put down some of the colors, something will pop out for me. I made my paper pretty wet with a mop brush and I had taped my paper down onto a piece of sturdy cardboard. Sometimes I find that if I put a more absorbent backing behind my paper, especially when I work with quite a bit of water, it just absorbs and helps dry the watercolor paper a little bit faster so that's what I did and I just used regular painters tape to tape this down these watercolors tend to not brighten as much as they dry as other um, watercolors usually do but I just really wanted this to be nice and bright and so I am just adding a little bit more watercolors on top of the uh, still wet background. And because these watercolors are a little bit more uh, opaque, they, um, I can actually go in with a lighter color and cover up the previous color even if it was a little bit darker. I just love working with these colors. They're just so forgiving and so much fun. So as I'm putting down my yellows I see a heart popping up and I am thinking to myself I'm wondering if this is gonna stay and I'm wondering how I will incorporate that yellow heart into the piece. I always kind of want to start out horizontally and I'm hoping that the piece will end up horizontal because it fits better into the frame of the video but Art has its own ways and most often it doesn't end up the way I had intended it or had planned it or had wanted it to end up. So I did see the heart and I did want to incorporate it but I didn't want it to be so obvious. So I broke it up a little bit and I kind of outlined it but not as accurately as I would have drawn the heart had it been on its own. Now that I have the first few lines down and it's not so intimidating anymore, I can go in and embellish it a little bit more. I also like to switch out my pens from thicker to thinner and you'll see that in a moment when I go back in with to the heart and define it just a little bit more. Sometimes I see certain outlines and I will recognize them by outlining them a little bit more and define them a little bit more. Other times 
I will just go by what feels good and feels right to me at the moment. I'm always just so curious what will come of the colors that I put down initially. You just never know and I think that is what is so appealing to me at the moment. And it doesn't really matter what kind of medium you work with. It can be acrylics, it can be just color pencils or markers or whatever you feel like it. But then when you go in with the, the black pens, there's things that emerge that you may have not seen when you put down the colors in the first place. And I really like that. Lately though, I have been a little hyper-focused on this style and I'm just gonna let my intuition run its course, if that's a thing. I feel like I go in phases and that's okay. It might feel a little bit repetitive to some people, but if you allow yourself to just explore a certain style, I think you just become a little bit more comfortable with working with, you know, uh, uh, mediums. And this style has taken a few different forms in the past and I feel that I have just found, I don't know, a little bit of happiness with this type of style. So I'm just going to stick with it for a little while. But uh, don't be surprised if all of a sudden I switch it up again on you. Because it has happened and it will probably happen again. I like breaking up my black lines with white lines and I like to stick with just a few different doodles. And I've said this before in the previous video and I'm sorry for repeating myself but not everybody watches all of my videos. So I like to stick to a few doodles. I like lines a lot. I like these kind of brick style doodles. I like the little bubbles and so sometimes I just stick with those but I mix it up. I mix up the pens. I mix up the sizes of the pens. I, um, like you saw, um, Earlier I had the bricks with white and then I came in and I finished the pattern with um, my black pen instead of the white. Also because the, the background was a little bit lighter and I wanted those bricks to show up a little bit more. But I think that it almost gives it a little bit of a dimension that way, if you will. So that is just to tell you that if you don't know what to doodle, you know, and you feel like you're running out of ideas, take the same doodles and just mix it up. Use a different thickness of pen, use a different color of pen, use a slightly different style like I do here. I did bigger dots and now I'm doing the smaller dots. And then I'm doing dots with my uh, dotting tool that is, <laughs> is making its presence again. So you've got the bubbles, you've got the dots you in different styles. Just, you know, mix it up that way. And that way I feel 
at least for me personally, it feels cohesive, but it still looks interesting when you look at the piece um, on the whole. Instead of using the uh, golden acrylic color, today I chose the gold that came in the Kuretake watercolor set. And I'm just adding a few details in gold. It's not the brightest of golds, but I like it. It's creamy and it ends up looking creamy. It's a little, it's very similar to the golden brand that I've used before, but it's in watercolor. And so it's not super bright, but I, it just gives it a little bit of shine. And I like that. And if you've um, watched a few videos of mine before, you will know that I absolutely adore the dotting tools because they give me these whimsy dots. I dip them into the color once and then if I want it whimsy, I will keep dotting and then the dots will get a little bit smaller as I keep going. And if I want the dots to stay the same size, I will just keep repeating going into the color and dotting it onto the paper. And that way the dots will stay uniformly um, in size. I chose to finish up the white spaces with some fine lines as well, just to kind of finish it up. And even though you can't really see the black dots when you look at the piece straight on, it does give it some texture when you move the piece and you look at it from, you know, a side view and things like that. So I just like giving it added um, texture that way. So you can play around um, with different mediums and different doodles and just um, give your piece some interest and um, certain focus spots to look at. It felt like the heart needed a little something something in the middle there and so I'm just giving it some dots in black and finish the piece off this way. And uh, that was it for this one. It was super quick, super easy, and just fun to do. And taking the tape off is always very satisfying to me. So let's have a quick closer look. And you can see when I tilt the paper, you can see the raised black dots. And if I had used the acrylic gold, those gold dots would be raised as well. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have time to be creative in some way and I will see you next time.